A new bombshell report from Broadcom shows a significant switch away from large public cloud providers. So what does that mean for you and your business and your career? Let's talk about it. So welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works and what does not and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, b geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. So this is a new report from Broadcom, and I'll go ahead and put the link in the description. Um, it's interesting because it's basically validating what everybody is seeing in the market right now, and certainly what I've been seeing and screaming about on this show for a long period of time. So they have a private cloud outlook report, which is a 2025 report, and it provides an in-depth analysis of the shipping enterprise cloud strategies, focusing on the growing trend, trend of workload repatriation from public to private cloud environments. So this was a study conducted by a luminous um, market survey report, things like that on behalf of Broadcom. And that's normally the way these go. And so what they do is an independent, independent entity, they go out and survey the market and try to see what's going on in the space and they report back and write a report about it. And those are interesting to me because in many cases, what we're seeing in the market and from these surveys is different than what the mainstream kind of tech press is reporting. And so, uh, it gets into the interest in terms of how we're going to find what is correct and what's not. And so this report surveyed 800 IT leaders globally, and they explore how the companies are embracing hybrid cloud models, meaning typically private and public cloud providers using them at the same time, and to balance performance control, cost efficiency, and security. So what we're seeing is we've been screaming about on this YouTube channel for a long period of time is obviously a desire to move to alternatives to the big hyperscalers. So cloud is growing and it's still growing by a pretty good pace, but the growth in terms of what the hyperscalers are seeing, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, is typically not at the same pace of the market. So where are people going? Uh, they're going to alternative clouds, they're going to private clouds, they're going to managed service providers, they're going to co-location providers, and going even back to on-prem systems. And that's been a trend for about the last five years. Not a lot of people are discussing it, but it seems to be a huge shift in the market that no one really can deny at this point. And obviously, the use of this technology for different purposes on different platforms to get to an optimized cost advantage is really the objective here. That's where people are moving to. So they're not moving to new platforms really to find new and innovative technology, I think they're okay with the platforms that they have. They're just finding platform analogs, in essence, the same platforms that they're running on the public cloud providers and then running it in an on-prem system with a private cloud's own computers, co-location providers, managed service providers, or even some of the uh, cloud alternatives that are public clouds themselves, such as sovereign clouds, regional clouds, special purpose clouds, guys like CoreWeave, things like that. And that's beyond a trend. We're seeing it happen today. It's a fact. So the core, the core outcome of this report is that uh, the cloud reset, as this is what the report's calling it, is coming, moving toward hybrid models. And so the report revealed a strategic, what they call a cloud reset, with 93% of enterprises uh, intentionally using a mix of public and private clouds for optimal performance, what the report calls it, and cost to control. And so ultimately, they're saying that this balance marks a shift from the previous rush to public cloud as businesses now focus on building workloads in private environments to modernize IT infrastructure. You know, obviously, Broadcom's not a, uh, an objective third party. They have some um, skin in the game. They, they sell a public cloud. So obviously, this is one of the reasons they're sponsoring such a report. But this report, I think, is providing truthful information that everybody should consider. This does not mean, by the way, and everybody likes to look at this in a binary way. Well, you must be saying, Dave, that the public cloud providers, hyperscalers are going to be going away. No, not at all. Um, we're always going to use them as a platform option and they're going to serve their purpose. And we're not going to be getting rid of public cloud providers. What's occurring, as I mentioned in many videos prior to this, is that people are looking at the alternatives. So it's no longer a simplistic world. It's no longer, are we gonna to move to AWS? Are we gonna to move to Microsoft? Are we gonna to move to Google? Perhaps all three in a multi-cloud deployment. It is the fact that we're moving into very complex, heterogeneous kinds of platforms 
where we're going to have a hodgepodge of different platforms, whether it's going to be on-prem, we're going to have different public cloud flavors, you know, certainly public cloud providers that are not known to us as well now. So the regional clouds and the uh, sovereign clouds and the special purpose clouds, people doing AI clouds, things like that. And so it's going to be getting more complex and more distributed and more heterogeneous moving forward. And I do think the private clouds are going to be making a comeback because in essence, they become kind of the new easy button for a platform that's going to be more cost effective. So normally when people move to a public cloud provider, and they'll tell you this, the reason we're moving there is because I can provision everything I need, you know, in a couple of minutes, maybe a couple of hours at the worst. And so that becomes the easy button for AI ecosystems, serverless ecosystems, container ecosystems, things like that. Well, the private clouds are providing an analog of that. So they're in essence providing an easy button for the on-prem version of the system. And since it's owned hardware and the cost of owned hardware is much cheaper than it was 10 years ago, that's where the cost advantage, com cost advantage comes from. So in the past, that was not really as much of an option as it is right now. And so if you move to private clouds, and I did lots of projects moving to OpenStack private clouds and other proprietary private clouds, basically it was an engineering project and it was a nightmare to, to get these things up, up and running and configured. That's no longer the case. So now it's a viable alternative. People are figuring out it's a viable alternative and they're moving in that direction. So obviously this is going to be an uptick in repatriation as people move uh, to alt cloud environments, specifically private clouds. And the report uh, outlines nearly 70% of enterprises are actively repatriating workloads from public cloud to private cloud environments with one third already completing the transition. And so the key drivers of this trend are the need for enhanced security, compliance, and better fiscal visibility. And I think the fiscal visibility is really what's driving this. Now, there always is going to be the control aspect of this. In other words, if people have very sensitive data, they think the data is going to be the crown jewels of their business, they don't want to trust another third-party provider uh, to host their data and control their information. So they want better control over the systems and what could be better than if you own the hardware. This is a bigger deal in Europe, as we covered before, because Ultimately, they're concerned uh, about the laws of the United States that are going to be compromising their information. So in other words, they're going to have a subpoena or something like that's going to take, take their data. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but I understand where the concern is coming from. But really, this is about saving a buck. So you can put the control stuff in front of me and talk about the security stuff and all that kind of stuff and governance of the system and having more control over their data. At the end of the day, we have a limited budget to run this stuff. Private clouds are going to be much more cost effective than the public cloud alternatives, and they work just as well. So that's why people are moving to private clouds. It's just that simple. So the next issue, security and compliance, and these are coming up more and more as a top enterprise concern where they really weren't as much of an enterprise concern after people adopted cloud. You remember when cloud, cloud first started, people were concerned about the control over their system and, and trusting somebody else to host their applications and host their data. That concern kind of went away. Well, now it's back. So according to the report, over 90% of IT leaders trust private clouds more than public clouds for addressing critical security and compliance challenges, obviously, because you control the hardware, you can go see it. Uh, and these concerns are especially evident uh, in uh, generative AI use cases where secure in-house data handling is a grow growing priority. So everybody's moving to AI systems. And obviously, AI is going to be fueled by enterprise data. And so where that data resides is going to be an issue. And people are more trusting of systems that they have better control over. And by, by the way, just because you own a private cloud, I'm not saying that it needs to run in a data center that you own. In many cases, it's going to be a co-location provider. It's going to be a managed service provider. It's going to be a private cloud as a service or something like that. You, you just have direct control over the physical data in those kinds of scenarios. So in a co-location provider, you can go see your services. Managed service provider, you know where they are and know, know who's maintaining them. And they have your name on them. Uh, in a cloud environment, not so much. You're leveraging uh, a cloud, uh, cloud computing uh, service as a utility. In other words, you're very much like your power and electric at your house. And therefore, you're going to be leveraging a service. You don't know where the physical servers reside. And you could be handed off between multiple different physical servers in a public cloud deployment. And that's where people get a little nervous these days. And I can understand why. I can understand why that could be a case. And certainly if it's out of the country, if it's, if it's controlled by organizations that are under different laws uh, and regulations than you are, you know, as, is, as is the case within Europe. 
And next, the consideration of private cloud as a modernization platform. So according to the report, again, gone are the days when private clouds were seen as legacy systems. 84% of enterprises now run both traditional and cloud native applications in private cloud environments. So, you know, for example, Broadcom's VMware Cloud Foundation 9.0, it's been out there for a while. They're in a 9.0 release. Uh, they exemplify the evolution, providing enterprises with a robust platform to manage hybrid and multi-cloud solutions effectively. So obviously Broadcom has some skin in the game with their private cloud. There's other, other private clouds in the market. Most of the major hardware providers, HPE, Dell, uh, even NVIDIA, uh, offer uh, private cloud instances, either a specialized private cloud, like an AI private cloud or a container private cloud, different flavors. And the idea here is just really putting private clouds back on the menu as a legitimate option as compared to some of the hyperscalers out there. That's all this is saying. So at the end of the day, this comes down to spending and what the enterprises are going to be spending. So the report shows that enterprise cloud budgets are expected to remain stable with 90% of the organizations forecasting only minor adjustments in spending over the next three years. Both private and public cloud investments are poised for growth, you know, illustrating the importance of hybrid models to meet diverse business needs. So that's really the main point here that you need to take away. So budgets have not exploded around, uh, you know, technology exploding, you AI, agentic AI, generative AI, things like that. You would think that they're going to find uh, millions of dollars to spend on those systems. Typically, the budget that IT has, enterprise IT has, is going to be fairly static, you know, 10, 15 percent of gross revenue or whatever they're using as their, as their metric these days. And it's not going to go up, at least not significantly. So, IT is going to be tasked with doing what more with the same amount of money. And so that's why we're making these decisions. In many cases, um, you can either go with the platform you think is going to be the coolest one or go with the platform that's going to be the most optimal, that's going to bring the most value back to the business. And that's when we start opening up our minds into other all cloud platforms, including private clouds. And that's all it's about here. This is about money, plain and simple. Uh, the technological stuff, you can certainly do a comparison between some of the private clouds and the public cloud functions, things like that. But the reality is these all cloud platforms are going to be good enough to run most of these workloads and even some of the advanced AI systems that are out there. And so that being the case, and the cost is significantly less, guess where the, where the applications and the data sets are going to reside? So it's, it's interesting, just kind of more uh, in terms of where this area is evolving. So it used to be, you know, cloud and, you know, hyperscalers, and that's it. Everybody's moving in that direction. I never thought that was a good idea. It's never going to be one platform that should win out each and every time. It's going to be good in some use cases, not good in others. And I think that the ability to kind of open up our mind and look at these alternative cloud platforms are going to lead businesses to finding more value within themselves, which I think is the main point. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay safe. Later.